Now, away from that, China is Africa's main creditor. Having lent to most countries under the motive of China-Africa cooperation, that is meant to see both parties develop economically. Now, in many countries, particular focus is given to infrastructural development, with the loans exceeding $140 billion. Now, in Uganda, this borrowing has been the subject of concern among citizens following speculation that the Entebbe International Airport may be up for grabs if Uganda fails to hold its own in terms of loan repayments. Now, Kampala-based correspondent Godfrey Badebie has been following this conversation and has more details. Over to you, Godfrey. Thanks, Jesse. The past one decade has witnessed China become one of Uganda's major development partners. This has been through loans, development grants, and support of sectors like education, transportation, agriculture, and electricity. This is the conversation that Ugandans are keeping up with. Here is what they have to say. In my own humble view, I think uh, there is a need for Africans to realize that uh, there is nothing that comes on a silver plate. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the fact that there are so many uh, businessmen and women in, in African continent, uh, why is it that they cannot pick loans from individuals within the context of Africa? Because if you look at businessmen, for example, people like Aliko Dangote, there are so many African, uh, African businessmen here who can give loans which are not as stringent or strings at, with strings attached like those ones that are receiving. So I think there is a need for Africans, first of all, to realize their identity as Africans. And then, uh, you know, uh, they should also, pro African countries should also promote, you know, tax, tax paying. Because, you know, uh, look at Tanzania, for example, they, they never picked a loan in the five years that Magufuli was in power. But they sensitized, you know, their, their citizens to collect money that they could use for, you know, most domestic, you know, things that they were doing. So I, I personally think that uh, that if, if 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 African leaders first of all should be exemplary, they should encourage their own citizens to do that, and they should also convince them that this money that they are collecting is not going to, to, to you know to, to be used on, on on things which do not benefit the citizens of the country. So in my own perspective, I think there is a need for African countries to realize their own identity and support their own economy by them, by them themselves. The yeah. government has given us assurance that uh, the airport is not going. But then maybe moving forward, in the next deals we have to sign with China or any other development partner, we must scrutinize the details to avoid being duped. Inside me, I feel pain because when they take our, our, our airport, meaning not even Uganda is failing, no future is going to moving forward, no anything will be in Uganda. People see like in Minimap of Uganda because now they, they take our, our airport. No anything will be fine for us. Even our grandfather, that is our future for our grand grandchildren to come in this nation, in this nation for, in Uganda. But we, we, we request our government, when they go to do things, let them care about it. their grandchildren. Don't they care about all, all, only their own self. The China-Africa cooperation is a forum seen to be deepening, building and developing a sustainable Africa. This has been a major issue of debate at the eighth conference of the China-Africa Cooperation Conference. Okay, thanks Godfrey Badebie. Just following up in the streets of Uganda on that speculative report that suggested this week Entebbe International Airport was supposed to be taken over by the Chinese government due to issues when it comes to default of a $200 million loan to expand that particular airport. Interestingly, it's Uganda's only international airport and as highlighted in that particular report, Uganda's aviation authority dismissed that report and Beijing have also dismissed those reports. Perhaps let me start with the Chinese embassy in Uganda who tweeted saying, why is money offered by Western countries uh, to developing countries consist, uh, considered rather assistance for development, while the money offered by China is labeled a debt trap? This fee is not logical or correct. The hype surrounding Chinese debt trap have no factual basis and is being pushed on malicious ground. So we want to talk about the Chinese 
African relations. I'm joined in studio by a man whose feet to be called an economist, Professor X N Iraqi who's usually a columnist frequently at the Standard, but equally an associate professor at the University of Nairobi. It's great to have you with us. Asante. And Asante for your time. Asante sana, particularly on a Friday afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I should be enjoying my weekend starting now. I hope you are not anywhere else, no, but I, this I, is matters of national importance. I appreciate the ambush. Okay, no Let's problem. talk about that. Let's talk about that. And starting from that particular point, is there anything like... Chinese debt trap diplomacy. Is this a fallacy? Is this something that is truly there? The issue of Chinese debt trap has been uh, very consistent. Mm -hmm. It's a narrative that has been uh, in the media for the last few years. Since China started bringing money to Africa, particularly for infra infrastructure projects. Before Entebbe, there were rumors about Mombasa. And before that, there was a story about a particular port in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And that made people believe that if China can take control of a port in Sri Lanka, they can do that for Uganda, they can do that for Kenya. But in my opinion, I don't think it is backed by facts. I don't think China is going to take over our ports or our airports. To me, it's usually one of the reasons that we find very interesting is that it's not very clear who comes with these narratives. Okay. It's usually in the media, you, you, you find a tweet, you find something, and then people amplify it. And I think the way I see it is, is more of a competition between the East and the West. For a long time, the West had very deep influence on Africa. But once China started giving us debt or loans, mm -hmm. and we started building highways, we started building ports, that citizens, ordinary citizens can see. You can see a, 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 an expressway here. You can see SDR. Yeah, yeah. You can go and see Entebbe Port and others. Okay. I think the West started feeling that they are being overtaken by China. So I think in this debate, I see it as a fight for influence in Africa mm -hmm. between China and the West. But, but it's happened before. As you mentioned, in Sri Lanka, Habantoto Port, a 99-year lease after it failed to repay the loans taken to build it. So it's happened before. And I think that's why guys are a little bit jittery. It happened before, but yeah. I don't think uh, Kenyans and Ugandans are that careless. I believe that when they were signing those Aruna agreements, mm -hmm. they safeguarded such takeovers. And I, think, I don't think Uganda or Kenya has defaulted on Chinese loans. So to, to, to the extent of China taking over a port or taking over an airport. So just because it happened elsewhere does not mean it is going to happen in Uganda or in Kenya. Okay. Uh, and I'm also get, uh, I get, I find this debate very exciting because for a very simple reason. Yeah. China has also lent money to the Western countries. If you look at the American books, you're going to find some money China has lent to the US through treasury bills or treasury boards. Mm -hmm. So why does debt to Africa become that contentious? And that's why I'm taking you back and saying it's more about influence than the debt itself. Okay. So what, what happened in Sri Lanka? They failed to repay the loan and it was taken over? I'm not very sure about the details yeah. because Yes, it is not that clear okay, okay. what exactly happened. All right. I, I, I would want to see the document that was signed between Sri Lanka mm, and China. Mm, okay. Then I would be able to make a very good decision. Perhaps that will expand the conversation right now. What exactly, from your point of view, is a modus operandi on China's Belt and Road Initiative? Because according to reports, they enter country on the pretext of development partners hand out fishy loans, quote unquote, with exorbitant interest rates when the state fails to repay it, capture the territories and strategic assets of national importance. That seems to be the narrative. And, and we need to ask, is that narrative uh, put forward by China or the Western media or the African media? Or is it a reality? Or is or... it a reality? Okay. Because okay. apart from that port in Sri Lanka, I'm not sure of any other. Mm -hmm. But let's get to the heart of the matter. Yeah. For a long time, the West has been giving loans to African countries. And I don't think anybody complained. True. So why should they complain now that China is giving us loans? And let's flip over the discussion. Suppose China is giving us loans in good faith. And they actually want to see Africa develop. They want to see our education improve, our infrastructure improve. Remember, China has become an industrial country in a very short time yeah. compared with the West. Suppose that's what they want Africa to do. And the fear about China, I'm not defending China, should not be exaggerated. Mm, mm. Because China was one time colonized to some extent by Japan and British. Yeah. Even Ch Hong Kong left, left British hearts in 1999, mm. just a few, ago, mm. a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think China has an intention of making or slowing down Africa's growth. 
What we need, in my opinion, is all the debt agreements with China should be public. Okay. So if I go to the Kenyan Parliament website, or Ugandan Parliament website, or Central Bank of Kenya website, and I see a debt that China has, a debt that Kenya owes China, I should see the details. How, when is it going to be paid? What should be the interest rate? What are the collaterals, if there are any? And I think if there was transparent information about all these debts, all these agreements, we would not be having this debate. Because we usually hear of toxic clauses, quote unquote, and I think there was pressure a while back on President Uhuru Kenyatta to make the SGR contract, is it, available to the public. We don't know if this happened. So uh, I would be very happy to see that agreement as well. so that I can make an informed decision. Okay. And I think it is a prerogative of all governments in the world to make such information available to the public. Okay. So because we wouldn't be able to know if there are any toxic clauses within Kenya's agreement with China because they haven't been made public. If yet. they're made public, we shall be able to judge objectively whether they are toxic or not. Okay. Because if, for example, if you get a loan from the bank, you see the crosses. That if you do this, mm. if you do this, what will happen? So I want something like that between the government of China, the government of Kenya. Let me ask you the next question. What's the difference between assistance for development, as it's termed by Western countries, <laughs> and this, you know, this narrative of coming over and capturing? Is there any difference between borrowing from the Western countries and China? I, I think the difference is uh, the PR. But right. if you say assistance for development, it looks more, para more paratable, mm -hmm. more friendly, mm -hmm. and more supportive. But when you bring the word loan, people think you pay exorbitant interest rates. And I probably would want to see whether the interest rates that Chinese charge on our loans and all that, that we, we, uh, we pay for the Western loans are the same. Okay. So we can compare. Okay. But I think it's more politics. All right. Remember, it's more of having influence on Africa. Because Africa is the next frontier. And the Chinese, the Americans, the Europeans would all want to have a free fit hold, a, a foothold on Africa. It seems to be the scramble for Africa 2.0, you know? Uh, actually, you, 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 we were just discussing a few minutes ago, and you yeah. remember that the European Union uh -huh. has come up with a project that is counterbalancing the, the Chinese One Road, One Belt mm. initiative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They also want to do something in Africa. As well. They want to develop our infrastructure. And I think at the time the Americans also did the same, mm. so that I can be boasting that this was by European Union, this was by Americans, this was by Chinese. Okay. I think since everybody is looking for Africa, we don't care who you are, as long as you come up with the good terms. Africa is open for business, but speaking like, of... Like a beautiful girl. Uh, interesting. But speaking of being open for business, is there any case where Africa can't stand up to this uh, debtors, to China and the rest of the countries? Because if we explore African countries' debt servicing ability. At least 40%, according to reports, of low-income countries in the region are either in debt distress or at a high risk. That's according to the International Monetary Fund. So can we, do we have the capacity to pay what we borrowed? I think, I think that's a problem because when you borrow money, you are supposed to borrow money that you are going to put into productive capacity of an economy. So some of the projects that we get mm -hmm. uh, and we finance through the debt, are not that productive. They are not, they are not going to contribute to the, to the productivity of the economy. So before we borrow money, we are supposed to do very good studies to make sure that this project is going to improve the productivity of the country. It is going to be to make, it, to make sure that this project, if we take it up to the end or we successfully implement it, is going to make it, is, is going to be possible for us to pay back. Mm -hmm. But some of the projects are not that well, are not that, uh, they are not in such a way that they are going to pay, them to pay themselves back. And that's where the Af African countries are. Remember that most of Africa is usually very good in exporting primary commodities yeah. and processed coffee mm -hmm. and processed minerals. Value addition is not Value addition is not much. Okay. So it becomes very hard for you to pay for such debt with primary products. If Africa was industrialized, we'd be able to get high value products that would make it easy for us to pay those debts. Okay. So maybe the same Africa industrialized and started producing uh, very high valued items like, like minerals, like cars, like, and so on, so that we get enough money to pay for these debts. But as long as we try to pay debt with the primary products, mm -hmm. coffee, uh, gemstones, and so on, it will be very hard. So in short, as we finalize, there's nothing wrong with Africa looking to the east or the west. We should just be very critical about the terms and conditions of these loans. I have no problem with the debt. Let okay. the government get money where they can All right. to develop the country, but let them get the best terms. All right. And those terms should be public so that any citizen can question them. 
I can ask my MP what was the term between China and Uganda, mm. or between China mm. and Uganda, between China and Kenya. Okay. Because information is very important. All right. After all, it is the taxpayers like you and me who will pay that debt. Definitely. Then we should be given that information. So transparency is of utmost importance. Very important. Very important. Thank you so much, Prof. Iraqi. I'm pretty sure you can now go on with your long weekend. Yes. If such is the case. Yes. But Asante Sana for your input <laughs> in terms of China and Africa relations, even as we're trying to substantiate those reports that were emerging on African media that Entebbe International Airport might soon be taken over by the Chinese government. But according to the Civil Aviation Authority in Uganda and Beijing, this is not the case. Many thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's edition of Bottom Line Africa. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your presence right here. We'll definitely keep you updated about any developments happening in the continent, the motherland Africa and beyond. My name is Jesse Rogers. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.